So the route I'm walking today is going to take me through three different markets. In the, in the middle of the third market, there is a shrine to a third century Chinese general. So we're gonna end the walk there and I'll talk a little bit about that and why there's a shrine to a Chinese general in downtown Seoul. Thursday afternoon and I'm out for my daily walk. We've got overcast skies, but not expecting any rain. Um, it is that time of year though for cherry blossoms, which is cool. And I'm surrounded by them right now. Uh, you can find pockets of them all over the city in different places, little parks and even uh, sometimes on little neighborhood streets like this one. So I'll keep an eye out for them over the next few days. Maybe uh, grab some shots of them. I'll keep my camera with me. And uh, today on my walk, I'm heading out to, uh, well, I'm in Shindangdong right now. Um, Shindangdong is in Junggu, Jung district. And a little bit of trivia. Shin, Shindangdong is what they call like an administrative neighborhood, which means it's, subdivided further into smaller neighborhoods. So the route I'm walking today is going to take me through three different markets. And they're very distinct from each other. And I thought it would be interesting to bring you along with me and, and talk a little bit about the markets. Now, one of them, there's not a lot to say about it because I couldn't find much information about it, but the other two have a little bit of history to talk about. And we're gonna end the walk at, in, the, in, the, in the middle of the third market, there is a shrine to a third century Chinese general. So we're gonna end the walk there and I'll talk a little bit about that and why there's a shrine to a Chinese general in downtown Seoul. to go to that bagel place. I haven't been there yet. I love a good bagel. And there's a big crowd there right now because it's lunchtime. I came by here yesterday and it was empty. I was actually trying to film this vlog yesterday and I had to cut it short early. But uh, yeah, it, it was uh, not so busy yesterday. And I didn't know that was that place was there until a few days ago. Yeah, this is uh, Shindang Odong, Five Dong. And I never used to come through here. It, it's only in the last few months that I've been walking through here since I started doing my uh, daily walks. I, I've come through here periodically and I'm fascinated by this place. I mean, look at this park. It's just neighborhood parks, especially those with playgrounds like this, you don't typically see them this busy but no matter what time of day I come through here, there are always people here in this park. The, lo the local residents use this park every day. And if you come here later in the afternoon when school lets up, there's children all over the place. One of the things I find really interesting about this neighborhood is the mix of old and new. I mean, there's so much of it around. You've got places like that Philly cheesesteak place, uh, the steak restaurant, Yankees Grill, you've got that bagel place, all that stuff. That's the kind of stuff you'd expect to see these days in Hongdae or Sung Sudong, right? Not in 
little old, you know, Shindang Odong, right? It, it just, it just seems the first time I, I saw it, I felt out of place. I was like, where am I? <laughs> you know? And I, I just love that. And in this park, the fact that it's always so busy, I love coming through here. And the reason I came into the park today isn't to show you how busy it is, but to show you this little, well, first of all, we can see the, the cherry blossoms, but then there's also this little thing right here, this sculpture. This piece is by, I assume, an artist, a sculptor named Kim Gyeong Min. And you can find her work all over the city, in subway stations, outside some office buildings, uh, in parks, uh, just all over the place. And there are even some in other cities, like in Busan. And I think, I assume that she must have some kind of deal going on, a licensing deal or a commission or something with Jungu, Jung District right now, because not only is this here, it, it looks relatively new. I mean, it doesn't look like it's aged at all. So I, I don't know how long it's been there, but not only is this here, but very close to my house on top of a parking garage, there's, there's a, a little uh, rooftop garden up there, rooftop park, whatever you want to call it. And there's a Kim Young Min piece there. And also I'm seeing representations of her work, you know, other, other pieces of hers in, you know, draw, drawn form or painted form on the walls that go up around construction sites here in Jungu. So she must have some kind of deal with, uh, with the local government. But yeah, I, her work, I've, I've always loved seeing it. And, uh, you know, she has it, all of her pieces have its very distinct characteristic, uh, elongated features. And they're all intended to represent common people doing everyday common things. So I read a newspaper article recently from a couple years ago about Shindang Odong, is a Korean article, and it said that uh, this neighborhood has gotten a little more popular and is, uh, has become known for its late night food culture, attracting people from Shindang Station. So I can believe that when I see all these, all these places around. And we're coming up now on the first little market we're gonna to see today. And this is where this is where things start to change up a little bit. We go from all the more modern stuff into this more dated architecture and these older shops. some uh, homemade tofu. That's uh, one of the nice things about this kind of local market is you can find all kinds of, you know, basically homemade stuff, homemade cooking oils and sauces. And so this market does have a name. It's called Bekhak Shijang. Bekhak means white crane and supposedly it comes from the fact that this used to be a wooded area where a lot of cranes hung out. So uh, the name is, is rooted in that. I really couldn't find anything else about its history. And I spent a bit of time searching the Korean internet, uh, came up empty. So that's all I know. So a lot of these traditional markets around Seoul have been covered over, you know, to protect from the rain and the snow. But you still find 
open air markets like this one in some neighborhoods. And if you wander the city enough, you'll surely run into a few of them. Now, Baekhak Shijang is right across the street from Seoul Jungang Shijang, Seoul Central Market. And that's where we're heading next. I'm now just on an alleyway just uh, just outside to the west of the market, and I'm actually more in the area that they call the kitchenware and furniture street. It's not an actual street. It's a, it's a broader area. It's actually quite big uh, uh, surrounding uh, the central market. Uh, there are used, store, used equipment stores, uh, new equipment stores. Uh, if you're opening a restaurant, cafe, if you're running a cafeteria, whatever, this is where you can come to get your, your, your equipment. A lot of uh, restaurants and, and places get their equipment here. We came here for some stuff when we opened our hot dog shop, my wife and I. But anyway, this, uh, this isn't actually Shindangdong now. We're in Huanghakdong. The central market is in Huanghakdong. When we crossed the street out of Shindangdong, out of Shindang Odong, we entered Huanghakdong on the other side. And this area, has been associated with trade in one form or another for centuries. Um, during the Joseon Dynasty, it was a collection point for goods coming into the city from the east, particularly firewood, timber, and vegetables. Because just to the east of us, just you've got Wangshini over just to the east, and during the Joseon Dynasty, that was very fertile farmland. So a lot of farmers would bring their vegetables uh, this way. And just beyond Wangshini, you have Tuksam. And that was a heavily wooded area with a lot of, uh, uh, I guess you'd call them lumber workers. I, I don't know what they called them back then. But anyway, they you know chop down the trees and deliver timber and firewood here to uh, this area. So everything was collected here. Uh, and then it would later, you know, some of it would later go on into the city through the East Gate. But over time, a, a market grew up uh, around the collection point. So you could come here and buy vegetables and firewood or whatever. And so that's what it was like during the Joseon Dynasty. Now, during the Japanese occupation of Korea in the early 20th century, that lasted from, you know, 1910 to 1945, uh, Japan started uh, opening, I guess, rice markets in Korea. And so they opened a rice market here, it, near here, uh, called Shindong, Shindong Public Market. And um, they opened that in 1941. And when Korea was liberated uh, from Japan with the end of World War II in 1945, the name was changed to Songdong Market. And, Songdong was the name of the district here, Songdonggu. It literally means east of the wall. Song is like walls or fortress, uh, and Dong is east. So Songdonggu was the district east of the walls. And it still exists today, it's just further to the east because this part of what used to be Songdonggu was carved out of that district to become part of Junggu in 1975. So. You know, Songdong Market later became Songdong Central Market, and then after 1975, it was named Seoul Central Market. 
So during its heyday, which basically ended uh, in the 1960s, it was the largest grain market in Korea. 80% of the grain sold in Korea came out of Songdong market. And the government uh, in the 1960s and 1965 or so implemented some policies. I guess they subsidized rice uh, and the rice market completely changed. And so Songdong market began to decline. And so in the late 70s uh, and into the 80s, there was a shift here. And what was then Seoul Central Market became known for mother of pearl inlay work. But then by the 2000s, even that was uh, no longer sustainable here. And you don't see mother of pearl inlay shops here anymore. But this kitchenware, uh, these kitchenware shops started opening around here in the 80s. And there were like 50 something shops in the 80s. Now there are hundreds of them all over the place. And this is kind of dominating the area now. So by the 2000s, Seoul Central Market just was really not what it used to be. So basically a shadow of what it used to be. And there's been kind of a revival in recent years, you know, because of Instagram and, and whatever. And, you know, I know there are like, uh, on some of the side streets in the area, you can find some modern cafes and uh, places opening up. And there's, there's a taco shop somewhere here in, in, inside the market that people like to come to. And there's a pho shop if you like Vietnamese food. But um, yeah, it's uh, really, it, it's, a, it's a weak revival. Okay, so we could wander around the kitchenware and furniture places like for a couple of hours. I mean, it's such a huge area. But instead, I'm going to bring you down here. This is what's now called, well, it's the Shindong Underground Shopping Center, but it's also a creative space, an art space. And I'll tell you what I mean here. So this runs under the Central Market and uh, uh, Majang Row. Right now we're under Majang Street, but up here it should uh, cut under the Central Market. And this opened in 1971 as a way to reduce congestion on the streets and improve the flow of pedestrian, pedestrian traffic. And at the time, it was the largest underground market in the eastern part of the city. And so there were a hundred or so shops down here. And unfortunately, uh, over time, after the opening of uh, Shindong Station, uh, the situation started to change here. And this market, though it had been popular and busy before, began to decline because people didn't need to pass through here anymore um, once the subway opened. And so, in the 2000s, uh, the city tried to revitalize this space, but it didn't work. A lot of the shops remained empty, so they created this, the Seoul Art Space. And there are some art studios down here. And sometimes there are spaces for exhibitions. All right, so Along here, you can find several little uh, gopchang restaurants, intestine restaurants. And one of the reasons that uh, they pop up around here is because you may have seen in some of the footage I shot earlier inside the market, there were some uh, 
shop selling a, a lot of chicken bits. Well, <laughs> you could find all the, the pork bits too, intestines, lungs, hearts, whatever, you know, all the bits that I typically find disgusting. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so a lot of intestine restaurants opened up in this area and they are distinctly different apparently from the intestine restaurants just on the north side of Chungaichan here. And I've learned there's a name, you, you have the Wangshini Gopjang is what's on this side. And over there uh, on that side is the uh, Dongdaemun Gopjang. And it's apparently different. And you know, I showed some of those Gopjang restaurants on that side in my uh, second favorite places video. All right, so we're crossing Chungaichan and we're gonna go into a uh, Dongmyo flea market here, but I just wanna point out that, you know, Hangakdong, you know, like I said, Hangakdong has always been associated with trade, but during the Korean War, the whole area was just demolished. Hwang, Hwangakdong and off down toward Wangshini, all of it was just flattened, right? And so in the, in the decade after the war, um, the people who lived here, they, you know, they were trying to get by, trying to survive. So they started selling scraps here at a little area in Hwangakdong. And beginning in 2003, they undertook the Changgechan restoration project. And that put a lot of street vendors out of business. And so Hwanhak Dong, uh, the flea market over here was already crowded. So at the time, a flea market started developing here around Dongmyo. Now, just down the street here in Dongdaemun, uh, there was a stadium. And I think it was built by the Japanese. And the Seoul government eventually decided to tear it down. And that began in 2006. And there were a lot of shops inside the stadium. And so now those vendors were out of, out of, you know, out of business. So uh, some of those vendors migrated over here to the burgeoning little flea market that was forming. And now th there's another, there's another flea market just further down called the Shinsodong flea market. But if you're downtown and you're going to a flea market, this one's closer. So this one started gaining steam, but it really blew up in the 2010s when several celebrities came on TV wearing clothes that they had bought from the Dongmyo flea market. And I believe G-Dragon uh, said something about it and you know, that, you know, sent it into the stratosphere. <laughs> still get all kinds of you know used items you know like computers and laptops and irons or typewriters or all kinds of stuff I mean you never know what you're gonna find in some of these little stalls but I think what the place is is known for among the younger crowd these days is the clothing um, vintage clothing used clothing <laughs> but vintage uh, so you see a, a lot more of those shops but you do still see some of the shops with, with random items. But there's also, you know, some shops selling new stuff here. But yeah, mostly vintage clothes. The flea market gets its name from this place right here.
Okay, so this is Dong Guang Wang Myo. And the Myo means it's a shrine. The Dong again is east. And the Guang Wang, it's a shrine to Guang Yu. Guang Yu was a third century uh, Chinese general who was later deified by the Chinese. And they, you know, started venerating him, worshiping him, building shrines to him, praying to him. And in the late 15th century, in the 1590s, uh, Japan invaded uh, Korea. There was uh, a series of battles or over two different periods uh, during that time. And it was called the Imjin War or wars. And Korea was assisted by the Ming Dynasty from China. And so when the war ended, uh, one of the Chinese generals had started building a shrine to Guang Yu and put in a formal request for the Korean government to build a, a large shrine to him. And now there was already a shrine to Guang Yu um, outside uh, Namdaemun, the South Gate, a smaller one. Uh, but the Korean government uh, agreed to do it. And they, well, I say the Korean government, it was the Joseon Dynasty, the Joseon Dynasty. Uh, the king, I think, was Sunjo at the time. I'll have to check my notes again, but I believe it was Sunjo. And anyway, the, the government uh, agreed to build the shrine. And it took two years. It was uh, apparently a, an elaborate undertaking, but it was plagued by poor leadership and corruption. Uh, I read a petition from the office of the censors uh, to the king to punish uh, some of the people involved in wasting materials and monopolizing the time of laborers. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was, it was a big controversial thing. So when it was finally completed in 1601, it was begun in 1599, it was completed in 1601, the king basically ignored it. And the people basically ignored it. And its condition over time just uh, deteriorated. But in the 1690s, the king at the time Sukchong, <laughs> the uh, Sukchong Wang. Uh, he restored the place and also the, the southern shrine. Now, apparently there were also shrines. Now, now this shrine is outside the east gate. That's, that's why it's called the east uh, uh, shrine. And there was the Nam Guang Wang Miu outside the south gate. And there was a So Guang Wang Miu outside the uh, uh, west gate. And there was a Bukwang Wang Mill up north. And I've read also that there was a Jungwang Wang Mill behind Boshengak, the, uh, the big bell um, on Bell Street, Chongno. Uh, there was another shrine to, to Guang Mill there, uh, Guang Yu there. But um, I've only seen a, a couple of references to it, but I've seen multiple references to the other four. Uh, but the only one that exists now is this one. However, there is a tiny shrine to Guang Yu over by Donggu University. I stumbled on it one day when I was filming a walk for one of my other channels. And uh, the sign out front says that nobody knows who built it or when, but it is definitely a shrine to Guang Yu. Now, unlike this shrine, it doesn't have uh, a, a statue of him, a carving of him. It has a, a, a painting, but yeah, that, that's an interesting thing. I could find no information about it other than the sign out front. But nobody knows who built it or, or when. And there were also shrines to Guang Yu in other parts of Korea, like in Andong and Pyongyang, which is now up in, in North Korea, and uh, maybe two or three other, other places. This front area here, this is where they performed ceremonies. And when it was first constructed, you had your Chinese uh, military guys coming in here doing the ceremonies. But, you know, like I said, the king and 
the Korean king and people basically ignored the place. And it wasn't until Suk Jong that the king started doing ceremonies in here. He started coming in here to perform stuff. Now today you can see people toss coins in here. I guess they're wishing for good fortune or whatever. But there is Guang Yu. And there are some other figures off to each side. And the, this is a, a Chinese design. It's not a, a Korean uh, design. And the building here is, it, it's two buildings connected. So you've, you've got the two buildings connected just, you know, by the roof. And the roof is in the shape of a Chinese character. So this is a very uh, kind of a, I guess, a unique place in Seoul. So uh, in case you needed a reminder, when you visit here, So, yeah, that's Dongguang Wangmyo, Dongmyo. And, you know, the market here, the flea market is named for this. And there's a subway station right over here. Now, the Korean name is Dongmyo Ap. And Ap means in front of. So, in Korean, it means in front of Dongmyo. But uh, in English, we just call it Dongmyo Station. Here you go. This is the real vintage stuff here. <laughs> Right, so if you're visiting Seoul, I think that uh, Dongmyo Flea Market is, is well worth a look. It uh, would be good to spend some time down here. And if you want to keep going south across the stream to, you know, Seoul Central Market, since you're in the area, make a day out of it, sure, go ahead. Wander around the kitchenware and furniture street, look at all that stuff. But really, I, I just feel like, you know, if you're looking for the market experience, Central Market isn't the place to go. There are, you know, better markets. You know, Guangzhou Market I don't recommend because it's too crowded, too touristy. Central Market I don't recommend because it's just so underwhelming. Just about any other market you can think of in Seoul would probably be a better option for the market experience. But if you're just interested in the area itself, well, yeah, then Jungang Market, Central Market would, you know, be worth a look, I guess. But this place, definitely is. I mean, this is just, you never know what you're going to see here. You know, I mean, look at this. This guy is selling fishing rods and rice bowls and there's a trumpet or a coronet or something. He's got power tools, just all kinds of stuff here. Here we've got watches and cameras and irons and blenders and pots and pans, just all kinds of stuff. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, little jaunt through three markets and a uh, Chinese shrine here in downtown Seoul. And thanks, as always, for liking, subscribing, and watching. And again, if you have any questions, please email me, qna at mikefromkorea.com. I will collect your questions. I'll reply to your email, but I'll also save your question for a future Q&A video. And that's going to do it for me this time. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.